Now this one's got a really weird trick to it, okay? So this is integral sine squared x cos cubed x with respect to x. And you might say, well, they both look really a bit complicated. Maybe either of them's u. And then you think, well, this one's raised to a higher power. So let's make u cos x. But remember that this is supposed to resemble the derivative of u. So if I said u was cos x, sine squared x does not resemble the derivative of cos x. So what I'm going to instead do is do something really sneaky and split cos cubed x into cos squared x and cos x. So here it is, I've done it, sine squared x, and then the cos cubed x is broken into cos x and cos squared x. Why? Well, that allows me to rewrite cos squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. And you might be thinking, what on earth, why are we doing this? Well, now we have sine squared x, which is a function inside a function, sine x inside of x squared, and we have cos x. And more importantly, if we were to let sine x equal u, the derivative of sine x, the derivative of u, is going to resemble this. But you're saying, well, hang on, what about this sine squared x over here? For the first time, we're going to be able to substitute u into here and u into here. So let's let u equal sine x. Now, of course, that means that the derivative of u with respect to x is going to be equal to cos x. And we can rewrite that as du over cos x equals dx. And now we can substitute our u twice and substitute our dx into this equation. All right, let's try to get this right. Sine squared x, we're going to put in a u for sine x. So that's going to be u squared. Now we've got this cos x here. I'm going to write that in, then we're going to have to get rid of it. And then multiplying it by 1 minus, and we've got this sine squared x. Sine x is u, so there's another u squared there. And then, instead of with respect to x, we have du cos x. And now the cos x's cancel out. What that leaves me with is this u squared here. The cos x's cancel each other out. And then I'm multiplying it by 1 minus u squared. And that's with respect to u. Okay, so I'm going to shift this up here now. And might expand it as well. So u squared times 1 is u squared. U squared times negative u squared is negative u to the 4, and all of that uh, with respect to u. Now, integrating 1 and then integrating the next one, we get u cubed over 3 minus u to the 5 over 5, and then a plus c on the end. Finally, we know that u originally was sine x, so we get sine cubed x over 3 minus sine 5x over 5, and then a plus c on the end. All right, that really ramped up. All right, let's look at this one here. Now, you're going to be tempted to say, well, let's let all of that equal u. But it doesn't resemble that, right? If we would find the derivative of that, we'd get something x, but we've just got a constant there. So instead, quick trick, we're going to complete the square on the bottom. Now, you should already know how to do that, so I'm just going to do it. So now once I've done that, I have this neat little thing here, sum, something squared. And when I find the derivative of that, I get something that resembles this constant here, which is nice. All right, so let's let u equal x plus 1, the derivative of u with respect to x equals 1, which means that du equals dx. Now let's sub that and that into that. So we have um, integral, that's 2 over u squared plus 5 with respect to u. Okay, so it's 2 over u squared plus 5. What are we going to do with that? Well, I don't like the look of that 2, so let's move the 2 out first of all. And now I'm here, right? And this actually looks a lot like an integral that you should already know. It looks a lot like this. The integral of a over a squared plus x squared equals inverse 10 x over a. Mm hmm. So a squared, in this case, is 5, which means that a must be root 5. Now, the thing that's stopping this from being that is that instead of having a root 5 on the top, I've just got the number 1 on the top. Now, I can easily fix that by multiplying by root 5 over root 5, so top and bottom. Um, now, that doesn't change anything because I'm just multiplying by 1, and I have this new 
bit here or same bit here with respect to you. Now, because all of these are scalars, I can just move them into the integral as I see fit. So I'm left with integral root 5 over u squared plus 5 with respect to u. And now I can integrate that in a single shot. I can say 2 root 5 inverse 10, the a value, uh, we need to do this in the right order, a goes on the bottom, so we've got our root 5 on the bottom, and uh, u goes on the top, and a little plus c on the end. So finishing it off, we have 2 root 5, 10, negative 1, u was actually x plus 1, all over root 5, and then a nice little plus c on the end. Alright, a bit hectic there, and we've used a little trick of getting that numerator the way that we want it, just by multiplying outside by 1. Last one, and we up the ante again by doing a similar sort of thing, but there's a square root there. Now again, we've got this quadratic, so we're going to complete the square, and then we look at it and we say, okay, we've got this fancy little function inside a function, so we can let u equal x plus 2. Now once I've done that, and I just did it, we can sub... Uh, that in, and we can sub that in as well. So we'll say that it's the integral of 3 over the root of 13 minus u squared and du there. Now, that should look like an integral that you know how to do, or very close to. It looks a lot like that. The only thing changing here is that we've got that 3 there. So obviously that's not going to be a problem. We just put the 3 out the front, and we're left with something that looks exactly like we want it to look. All right, and now we can say that that's equal to 3 times inverse sine uh, bracket, and then we need to be careful, we're putting the u there and the square root of 13 there. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. Finally, u is not u, it's x plus 2. So we have 3 inverse sine x plus 2 over root 13. Don't forget your plus c's. All right, that is integration by substitution. Now, you'll notice there that I made some logical leaps that you might not be comfortable making. The key here is to practice. Practice, 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 and you'll get better at spotting the patterns and the things that you need to do to make all of this, this happen. Good luck.